choices are. Merv Griffin premieres Monday at 3. Now, the news specialists. Linda Coldiron, Gary Spinell, Richard Montague, Chopper 7. From the newsroom in Seattle, this is Channel 7 Weekend Eyewitness News. Good evening. The Marines are out of Beirut tonight and on ships off the coast of Lebanon, but about 100 Marines are still in Lebanon to guard the U.S. Embassy. The redeployment of the troops went smoothly enough, but once they were out of Beirut, the fighting picked up once again. Larry Pintak has the story. Let's go, gents. It's time for us to go. Our boat is here. My boat is here. Yeah! The last Marines left the way they came, across the beach. It was finally time to leave Lebanon behind. No one was reluctant to go. Glad to get off the beach. Glad to get the troops off the beach. No more wounded, no more killed. Go home. The battleship New Jersey opened up less than an hour after the last Marine left. The 16-inch gun shelled the Syrian-held mountains. A reminder that though the Marines are leaving Lebanon, the U.S. intends to stay involved. Today's final redeployment, as the Marines call it, marks the end of a 17-month ground operation that claimed the lives of at least 260 American servicemen. The first units aboard this morning arrived by chopper. They were looking forward to the change. But they aren't going home quite yet. They'll stay off the Lebanese coast until another Marine unit replaces them in April. The Marines left a few friends behind in Lebanon, but overall, their popularity has plunged. To many Muslims, they've lost their neutrality, sided with the Christian right. For the Marines, the pullout was a celebration. But from the Lebanese, there were no flowers, no cheers, and no victory parades. Larry Pintak, CBS News, West Beirut. With the Marine pullout from Lebanon, the United States has to come up with a new policy concerning that war-torn nation. Earlier today, Defense Secretary Caspar Weinberger was asked if the U.S. would continue its military support of the Lebanese government. I think we want to wait and see what the situation develops, but uh, the uh, uh, need for a uh, sound uh, uh, representative uh, uh, national uh, Lebanese government remains. The man who once led a group of fighters in Lebanon went to Jordan today to talk about a Middle East peace settlement. PLO leader Yasser Arafat met with Jordan's King Hussein to visit an attempt to get talks between the PLO and Jordan back on track. Those talks collapsed last spring after a rival Palestinian faction ran Arafat out of Lebanon. The main topic of discussion today, the Palestinians living in Jordan. It was Jesse Jackson's announced sympathy for the Palestinian cause that angered some Jewish leaders in this country. Things got even worse last week when reports surfaced that Jackson had privately referred to Jews as Jaimes. After a week of denials, Jackson tonight admitted making that remark. Tonight's admission comes as tensions between Jackson's supporters and the American Jewish community continue to grow. Bob Faw has that part of the story. The setting was Chicago. The audience was a nation of Islam, black Muslims, but the target was American Jews. The man who has enthusiastically endorsed Jackson accused Jews of poisoning the political climate against the candidate. And citing recent threats against Jackson, Farrakhan issued a veiled threat of his own. Why hurl stones at him? Is our champion. If you harm this brother, what do you think we should do about it? Last night, Jackson did not disavow those remarks or disassociate himself from them, and today he did just the opposite when he launched a new attack on Jewish leaders. Well, there is, in fact, a uh, documented evidence now that, that many Jewish leaders and, uh, and rabbis, as well as the, the JDL, in fact, have assumed the responsibility uh, to hound this campaign. What Jackson calls persecution ranges from the nation. disruption of his presidential announcement by Jewish hecklers to picketing of his Boston office by members of the militant Jewish Defense League, to this advertisement in the New York Times from a group calling itself Jews Against Jesse, to this memo given reporters by the Anti-Defamation League, which outlines a series of statements by Jackson which the League considers offensive. Jackson, now back in New Hampshire, is angry about what happened, which is why he chose to escalate and not defuse the controversy, which has dogged him all week and hurt him in the polls. He still wants to meet and plans to meet with Jewish leaders Today, one of them said Jackson's latest charges simply aren't true. Bob Fall, CBS News, Manchester. 
The search is continuing tonight for two men missing in a boating accident near Oak Harbor. They were aboard a 16-foot pleasure craft that apparently struck a submerged object off Woodby Island about 5 o'clock this afternoon. Officials say neither man was wearing a life jacket. The damaged boat was recovered, but so far there's no sign of the men who've been aboard. Coast Guard and Navy helicopters are taking part in the search, along with a Coast Guard cutter and some private boats. Seattle climber Jim Wickwire tonight says he's given up hope of finding his friend alive on Alaska's Mount McKinley. Japanese climber Naomi Umura has been missing since reaching the summit two weeks ago. Wickwire says he found scraps of food and fuel in an ice cave, but he's convinced Umura fell to his death while descending the mountain. Members of a Japanese climbing crew say they're determined to scale the mountain to recover Umura's body. In Olympia tonight, there was heated debate over a plan to spread the cost of charity hospital care. We'll have that story in a moment. Cutlass Cut Cut Supreme. Cutlass Cut 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 Sierra. Oldsmobile Barbie. 1,000 special Oldsmobiles have arrived at your gallant men of Oldsmobile. Like the number one selling front wheel drive in America. Cutlass Sierra for only $94.66, or America's best-selling car, this special edition Cutlass Supreme. Plus, when you buy or order the Supreme with selected popular option packages, you could save up to $600. Tomorrow, at your gallant men of Oldsmobile. React, Milo, Plattis, Roberts, Dunmeyer, Alderwood, Reboard, Loberg. It's spring air, blowing in savings, Monday only at the Vine. Choose this beautiful Cairo Classic One from $59.95, twin each piece. This two-piece queen set is just $199.95, and this three-piece king set is $299.95. You'll also have your choice of the Cairo Classic Two, the Cairo Classic Three, the Cairo Classic Four in foam or inner spring, and the Ultima Two back supporter. We're blowing in savings with prices from $59.95, Monday only at the Vine, where the choices are. From European science comes a first in dental care. New checkup with fluoride to attack cavities, plus microsil to attack plaque. Push button checkup, a toothpaste scientifically formulated to help break the bacterial bonds of plaque. Brushing with checkup not only removes plaque, but reduces plaque buildup as it polishes. Helps gums stay strong and healthy. Checkup, the plaque attacker. Hi, I'm Jack Roberts for Linwood Home Appliance. I'm the guy to see for the lowest prices on appliances, TV, and video. I'm declaring war on high prices. We will save you lots of money on Magic Chef. We have bought seven carloads of Magic Chef laundry, refrigerators, microwaves, and ranges. Our volume buying can help you win the war on inflation. So come on in for the best deals on Magic Chef. We won't be undersold. Open seven days a week. That's Linwood Home Appliance at 19820 Highway 99 in Linwood. the future. It will come from our imagination. What will it look like? What will it be? Find out Monday at 11 when Eyewitness News Update explores life in the future. The problems, the possibilities, the promises. On the number one news, Eyewitness News. A 36-year-old escapee from Western State Hospital is still at large tonight. Robert Flink failed to return from an authorized visit to his brother near Black Diamond. Flink was taking part in a special conditional release program that allowed him more freedom at the hospital. The state prison system has a new policy of releasing certain inmates ahead of schedule, and today the state house approved a bill to continue that program. But some lawmakers are not happy about an amendment to that bill that requires Governor Spellman's okay to keep the program going. The bill prohibits early release for sexual psychopaths and violent criminals, and it eliminates the one inmate per cell requirement at Shelton. The bill now goes on to the Senate. A plan to spread the cost of charity hospital care to all hospitals in the state died in Olympia tonight, one of the final actions in the House of Representatives before today's major cutoff for most legislation. It was a plan that had sparked sharp attacks from the state's hospitals. The story now from Ed Evans, our legislative specialist in Olympia. A plan moving through the legislature to pool hospital charity costs began generating a storm of controversy last week when the state's hospitals placed newspaper ads around the state calling the charity pool a tax on the sick. A number of legislators say that ad was deceptive. However, they're reluctant to give credit to the ad for the death of the idea. 
The charity portion of the bill was voted down in the House. It was excluded from a bill dealing with ways to slow rapidly rising medical costs. The bill's main architect, Senator Jim McDermott, is optimistic that another approach might yet be found to deal with charity care. I think it's still possible to deal with that issue. There are many ways to deal with it. The way we chose, they were unable to accept, but I think there are other ways to go about dealing with it. As written, the House bill changes the makeup of the hospital rate commission. It'll provide that a majority of the members be comprised of consumers and payers. Backers of that idea say it should at least slow down the rising rate of costs. Even if the newspaper ad was not instrumental in defeating the charity care provision, Senator McDermott says it will be remembered. But they pay, they'll pay a price for that because nobody will forget what they did. McDermott says the newspaper ad will be remembered next year, particularly if hospital costs haven't started going down by then. He says, too, it may take quite a while to ultimately solve the problems of hospital charity care, maybe several years, something, though, he says he's going to continue to push. From Olympia, Ed Evans, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. In Pennsylvania, three people were injured today when three Conrail trains collided. It happened about 40 miles northeast of Pittsburgh. A westbound train rear-ended a second train. That touched off an explosion and fire that damaged a third train. About 50 residents of a nearby village were evacuated until it was determined that no hazardous materials were involved in the fire. In Newark, New Jersey, four children died when a fire broke out in their home early this morning. The four had been left unattended, according to fire investigators. The children were found in the first floor bedroom. Fires across the country today killed eight children and left nearly 50 people homeless. And in Brazil, investigators say the death toll is up to 81 in a gas explosion that ripped through a shanty town there yesterday. Most of those killed were children or old people. Still to come, a hometown celebration for Olympian Rosalind Sumners, and the Sonics are treated very rudely by some visitors from San Diego. Sports is next with Gary Spinell. For years, people have been fantasizing about what cars will look like in the year 2000. Well, fantasize no longer. Because one car you may be seeing next century is here today. The 1984 Volvo. Statistics show the average life expectancy of a Volvo is over 16 years, which means instead of fantasizing about cars in the next century, you can own one that could make it there. Volvo, a car you can believe in. You're a part of me to catch out. Touch the heart of me to catch out. Every single day in every way you prove how much you are a part of me. Cats help people live healthier, even longer lives. And with Purina Cat Chow brand cat food, people help cats to live healthier, longer lives, too. Maybe that's why veterinarians recommend it most. You prove how much you are a part of me. A touch for making hair look beautiful takes years of practice. But when you perm at home, you can have that touch, too, with Lilt. You see, it's all in the roll-ups. A bad roll-up shows frizzies, a good roll-up, beautiful curls. Only Lilt has these amazing sponges. They grip better, roll up better for more beautiful hair. Lilt sponges put a professional touch right at your fingertips. <laughs> and I had to practice for years. Lilt's professional touch, beautiful. Bell Square Furniture regrets to announce the end of its January midwinter sale and happily announces the beginning of its February midwinter sale with up to 40% off on those select items you could have saved 40% on during January. Furnishings by Baker, Henredon, Century, White of Mabane, and more. Bell Square in Lomans Plaza at Factoria, Magnolia Village, and on Broadway in Seattle. Are you worried you bought the wrong office telephone system? Next time, call First L. Will she or won't she skate in the World Championships? That question came alive again today as Olympic silver medal winner Rosalind Sumners was honored in her hometown of Edmonds. Hundreds of her fans turned out at Edmonds High School today to show their support and appreciation. Later, Roz appeared on network television with CBS sportscaster Brett Musburger. She told Musburger that she hadn't decided whether or not to go to the World Championships next month before turning pro. Just yesterday, Roz said she'd already decided not to compete in the World Championships, but it seems she's changed her mind, or at least she hasn't even made her mind up yet. 
Well, what do you think? Isn't that Gary? a woman's prerogative? I've always heard Oh, that. I knew you'd say that. <laughs> I knew you'd say you that. You can't open yourself up like that, because you know it. You know, she told us, uh, she told Jim Marshall, the super channel the other night, that, yeah, she was going to turn pro, and then she told Brent, uh, I was eating breakfast, and I'm like, <coughs> wait a minute, Raj, you can't do that. I just told everybody yesterday that it was the other way around, so. Well, she's probably torn As, because she wants to compete, but she's awful tired. That's right. I'm tired, too. Well, go Boy, ahead. The Sonics it. looked a little tired today, too. Uh, some old Sonics, James Donaldson, Greg Kelser, now in San Diego. They were in town today to get together with the new Sonics. And last time I checked that score, it hadn't changed. Last time the San Diego Clippers came to town was March 8th of 81. That was the last time they won, I should say. Clippers final today, 101. The Sonics only had 93. Take a look at some of the early highlights, and this will tell you why the guys didn't do well. Look at Terry Cummings. He goes to the hoop. What a super second-year player he is. Clippers jump on top 14-3 with Big Red Bill Walton. Look at this. Looks like about five years ago when he was playing. Looks like he's back in his prime. Big James came to town today. James Donaldson, who went to San Diego to trade for Tom Chambers. Look at here. Boom. There it goes. 18-7. The Clippers are on top. Donaldson again. San Diego is going to jump out to a 34-18 lead, believe it or not. Sonics are going to come on here. John Sunvold seems to be the spark as of late. Johnny with the ball right here, going to jump up and hit one. That's the Sonics are within nine points now. Big James and Kelser are going to team up here. Watch Sigma bat the ball. Kelser bats it to Donaldson, who slams it home. And the Clippers go on and win. Now, Big James is going to run over here to the bench and tell us why he's happy about the game today. <laughs> well, it feels great. Uh, we have a, a very good rebounding team here with myself and Bill Walton, Terry Cummins. Greg Kelser comes off the bench. We have a couple more. And we just keep on going to the boards. Uh, I don't think we're the best shooting team in the league, but when the shots do go up, we're in position to get the rebounds and put them back in. Well, here's the other scores today. The Lakers beat Philadelphia 101-99. Indiana tops Portland by a single basket. It's Detroit with a big score over Cleveland. And Boston tonight beat Phoenix 116-109. to The college top 20 today. North Carolina remains right on top of the heap. A big score over Clemson today. Houston, two points better than Arkansas. DePaul is 10 points better than Louisville. UNLV, hardly a contest today against Cal Santa Barbara. And Maryland upsets Wake Forest, 15th ranked Wake Forest, 74 to 65. Believe it or not, as we switch here, that is a football game in stop action. It's the USFL there in action today for the first day. New Jersey beats Birmingham, Jacksonville. Boy, they really topple Washington. Oklahoma 7-3 over Pittsburgh. Philadelphia 17-9 over Memphis. New Orleans, this one's decided by a field goal, 13 to 10. It's Tampa Bay by a field goal over Houston, 2017. Arizona with a big score of the day, 35-7 over Oakland. And Denver tops L.A., 27-10. Let's switch to baseball. This is fun. When well, the Montreal Expos promised Pete Rose he'd play every day, you know they had to do something, probably trade uh, this guy, uh, this guy over here, Al Oliver. Uh, he's going to San Francisco for next year. They're going to send the Expos. The Giants are Fred Brining. Uh, Oliver's over here. Oliver's been around the league. That's him in his Texas uniform, all right? So he's been with Pittsburgh, Texas now, the Giants, and he's over here. Boy, that's confusing, isn't it? Get out of here, Al. I got things to do. Speaking of the boys this summer now, they are in full force. And th yeah, this is the Yankees training camp. Here's some guys you'll recognize. Uh, yeah, there's Jerry Mumphrey, and who, there's Yogi Berra and George Steinbrenner. And what they're going to do is move Dave Rigetti to the bullpen. There's Dave to replace Goose Gossage who is on to San Diego. Here's Rigetti. He's willing to do it, and we're very happy. I know uh, a lot of guys think we forced it upon him. But, uh, my, I forced him upon it, and, uh, but I didn't. We had all the consult, consent from all our coaches. We think who would be the best man down for us, and we thought Rigetti would do the job. I take it as a challenge, and there's no way I'm going to sit and complain about it and not do the job, and uh, I feel I can. They're taking a big chance of doing it, and they're going to take a lot of heat. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to take a lot of heat for saying yes, but uh, find out if I'm up for the challenge or not. I'll tell you who's taking a lot of heat last year. This is July 4th. Watch David here strike out. That's Wade Boggs of Boston. He pitched a no-hitter against the Sox on the 4th of July. Well, the first Pac-10 dual meets was held indoors at the University of Washington today. The combined men's and women's track team defeated Stanford 127-120. Heck had pavilion record spell in the long jump, 55-meter dash, and the women's mile relay. Husky sprinter Donner Dennis broke her own record in the 55 meters. Washington men won 9 of 14 events, while Stanford, their women, captured 7 of 11 events. At the Alpine skiing event in Colorado today, Tamara McKinney took the slalom title for the second year in a row. Are we going to show the skiing? 
the ski bus today? Oh, they say, yeah, take a look at these pretty pictures. Oh, it's so pretty up there and nice and cool. But I was uh, home by the fireplace. Pretty pictures of the Rainier ski bus. Mike Chiron of Olympia won the men's division, and Kim Yannick won the freestyle. And congratulations to Ricky Lockridge. He won the fight title today in the Breakers 8, Kelowna 7. And I'm going to my Kelowna out of here because it's, <laughs> okay. I'm done. It's, they're going like this. Go to your left. That's that way. Go to my corner. Thank you. Next, Richard Montague is up for the weather forecast. And then some marathoners do their part for the Special Olympics. Few cars can take what the Northwest weather pours on with responsive handling in rain or snow. Four-wheel disc brakes that fling off water and stop on command. Wide base radials that grip the road and a tough four-coat finish that shines through the storm. If you think it's expensive, think again about a Volvo. Affordably priced right now at your Puget Sound Volvo dealer. You know what these are? Chinese rugs. We just brought hundreds here direct from mainland China. I hear this big sale on at the barn, and I hear you can save a hundred to a thousand dollars. And that's a lot of dollars. Yeah. They say each one's a treasure, knotted by hand and wool that's soft and silky. It's beauty, isn't it? They say one will bring you good fortune. Well, you can save a fortune now during the most important Chinese rug event at the barn, where I've heard the choices are. I hate Qantas, not for selling the South Pacific round trip from California for $1,100. Not because they take you to Tahiti and the Great Barrier Reef and New Zealand. I hate Qantas because their crummy deal also brings you to Sydney and me, all for $1,100. <laughs> Give me a break, Qantas. Attention, attention. Sandstead's B&R Furniture is closing 60 to 80% of their huge showroom warehouse. Millions of dollars of name brand furniture must be sold. Management has ordered a complete liquidation of all bedroom, living room, dining room sets, rockers, recliners, sleepers, bunk beds, mattresses, tables, lamps, wall units, office furniture, everything goes. Make the buy of a lifetime on this multi-million dollar liquidation going on right now at Sandstead's B&R Furniture. On the corner of 180th and Andover Park West, one mile south of South Center, one block east of the Pavilion. Work week's about to begin again. What's it going to be like? Stormy Monday. That's the watchword for tomorrow morning. Well, here are the current conditions now at Henry M. Jackson Airport, where it is misting every so often, as it has been doing off and on through the day today. And those partly cloudy skies will cloud up even more tonight. 43 is the current temperature with 76% the humidity. Winds are out of the southwest, and the barometer is falling currently at... Uh, 30.18 inches of mercury. Some of our high temperatures across the state today include Forks, Hoquiam, and Olympia with 43, 42, and 43 respectively. And in eastern Washington, it got to 37. In Spokane today, at Wenatchee recorded a 36 degree reading, and in Omac, a two recorded 36 degrees for their high today. Now there's a frontal system approaching our shores, held off in part the past couple of days by some high pressure. And as it moves very slowly towards the east, the high pressure, uh, that is, it will allow the frontal system to move our way, which is now just off the shore here, and you can uh, see that it brings a hefty amount of cloud cover, and with it, 50% chance of rain tomorrow, and up to 80% by Monday night, and in its wake, cold air promises more showers through the day on Tuesday, and then some partial afternoon clearing. There are gale warnings off the coast and through the strait, specifically for southerly winds to 30 knots, and then up to 35 on Monday, specifically offshore in the north northern parts, with a swell 6 to 12 feet increasing to 15 feet on Monday through the straight east to southeast winds gusting to 35 knots and showers in the vicinity, of course, through the strait. And on the uh, inland waters around the vicinity of the San Juan Islands, a small craft advisory for winds up to 30 knots. Elsewhere, south to southeast winds 10 to 20 knots, and of course, showers expected Monday and part of Tuesday as well. Through the mountains, snow in the upper elevations and rain down below with a snow level at 3,500 feet, easterly winds. Uh, to uh, 35 knots at times, 25 to 35 knots, and afternoon pass temperatures in the mid-30s. Here's our almanac. And today, the high was uh, 46 degrees, same as yesterday. Low, uh, the low last night was 37. The records were set in 1949 and 1962, and we've had two hundredths of an inch of rain. Uh, the past 24 hours. Now here's the forecast. Tonight, more clouds, of course, and they continue to build with a 50% chance of rain. 41 degrees, expected low with easterly winds. 
and those could get kind of gusty at times, up to 20, maybe a little bit heavier tomorrow. Cloudy skies, 52 degrees the high. Our five-day forecast looks like this. A 40% chance of rain early part of Monday, up to 80% tomorrow night. And then hopefully that clearing will lead to some uh, warming temperatures on Tuesday, regardless of the fact that the clouds return our way midweek. As the raindrops come a little further apart on Tuesday, yes. and that's what we call clearing. That's what it seems it's to be. Good enough. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Richard. All right. Finally tonight, hats off, or maybe we should say shoes off, to the hundreds of people who danced all night for the Special Olympics. The marathon started yesterday at noon, and enthusiasm was really high. Nearly 500 dancers were going strong in the University of Washington's Hub Ballroom. But after rocking around the clock, the crowd in the hub wasn't quite the same. But they rubbed and taped their aching feet and legs and kept right on going right up until noon today. And here's the best news of all. The marathon raised $105,000 to benefit the Special Olympics. And that's it. This late edition of Weekend Eyewitness News. Richard Gary and I will be back again next week. Until then, have a great week. And thanks for joining us. Good night. Here with tonight's editorial is Kenneth L. Hatch, president of KIRO. Cairo has declared 1984 the year of the child. In conjunction with that campaign, here's Charlie Langdon, executive director of the Children's Home Society of Washington. Since 1896, the Children's Home Society of Washington has been responding to children who have been physically, emotionally, and sexually abused. As with other child and family agencies, we are currently overwhelmed with the number of children that we must help. We would like to ask you, the general public, to help us by preventing child abuse, by being positive with your own children. The hurting ch parent is the parent who abuses the child. A parent gets hurt as a child when he or she is criticized and condemned for the person they are rather than for their actions. We ask you to be positive with your children, whether they are adult parenting themselves or minor children. We ask you to help them grow positively. We ask you to refrain from criticism and negative condemnation of them as people. If you do that, then the children of the 21st century will be positive, productive parents. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Langdon, for sharing your views with us. Cutlass Cut 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 Sierra. Oldsmobile Barbie.